death by a thousand joints. What do I mean by that? Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode here at Sobriety University. On this channel, we talk about addiction and recovery related topics. My name is Joel and in this video, we're gonna be talking about three ways smoking marijuana kills you slowly. Intense topic, I know. A friend and I were talking recently, his name is Anjay. Uh, I just did an interview with him and he has a whole channel about smoking weed and, and overcoming it. It'll be linked down below in the description. And we were talking about how weed is a very subtle killer where it will start off innocent and then over time it slowly progresses until one day, as many of you probably know, life kind of blows, <laughs> and to put it kind of simply. And so today I'm going to dive into that a little bit more and talk about some of the ways that it kind of creeps up on you. I know I experienced that personally. What used to be a really fun activity suddenly became like my worst nightmare. And so if you guys have heard about the waterboarding, the Chinese waterboarding technique, <laughs> technique, torture technique. So thankfully, hopefully it doesn't get used that much anymore. What happened though is that they used to take prisoners and lay them down on a flat bed and they used to have a little like droplet of water that would just it would just drop right in the middle of their forehead over and over for days and days and eventually even though it was like so small just like it would drop of water right no big deal but since it happened so many times so many repetitions over and over again it would start to make an indent in their head and they could eventually die from it and so that's how, that's the analogy I use when I think about marijuana here is that it starts off with maybe, you know, a tiny little bud, a piece of flower, right? How can this be consequential? And next thing you know, it's like got you by the throat and it's just strangling you day after day. Uh, I know I make light of this and if you're in it, it can be very serious. So I do empathize. And uh, my goal here is just to make this seem as less, you know, serious as as possible because one day my hope for you is that you'll get to look back at your using days and just laugh at how how crazy it was and how how insane it was and now and and have that joy that you're not there anymore have some of that laughter be laughter of joy that wow my life is so much different that's the goal here for you and so diving in number one is going to be isolation this is probably the most common one. Comment down below if you've experienced isolation. Uh, I know I sure did. And that was the first way weed was starting to kill me slowly, was that what started out as a way to hang out with friends, socialize, maybe go to a party, meet a bunch of people, smoke weed, uh, slowly became where I was like, you know, I could go out with friends and spend time with them, or I could just stay by myself and keep doing what I'm doing. And that became, and when I did that, I was like, oh, this is kind of comfortable. I like this. I don't have to feel socially anxious or anything. Because what you might have noticed is that weed at first kind of reduces social anxiety. However, over time, it makes it worse, including paranoia, um, depression, etc. And so that's what I was finding. I'm like, why would I want to experience that at all when I can just be by myself? And you know, it became to where I would go out with friends and it would be kind of stressful, like just the planning of it. Like if a couple, like a buddy was coming into town, I'd start getting really nervous and, and I didn't know why. Um, and because of that, I would just smoke a ton to try to feel better. And by the time they came over, I was like so sedated, even if we were going to smoke together. And I can just remember looking back that there were so many times where I was so excited to hang out with friends. Um, my roommates in college and smoke weed together and we just laugh for hours and and just do goofy things go go get food and I just felt so free and it was just so confusing and, and saddening to be honest on why I couldn't I wasn't experiencing that anymore where it was almost the exact opposite where I would feel like all my insecurities would be there and it didn't make sense it, it I mean it makes sense now looking back but in the moment it made no sense and that was really scary. And that was, unfortunately, I didn't know that, okay, this is because marijuana is no longer working for you. And your, your spirit, your energy, your soul is trying to tell you to, to, to quit and find another route to, to have human connection. And because of that, uh, I you know, perpetuated the cycle for a long time. So, so number two is gonna be that it becomes a crutch, pun intended. And kind of like with number one, 
where it used to be a really fun thing I would do once in a while, like maybe after school, after studying, after work, uh, on the weekends, maybe just like Saturday or something, if I was hanging, if I was hanging out with friends, became, you know what? I'm a little stressed for this exam. I'm gonna smoke this morning. Or I have friends and family coming over. Or maybe it's a holiday, I'm gonna go see them. I'm a little nervous, I'm gonna start smoking to, to, to kind of quell the nerves. And slowly it became my little, like third little secret where I always had it in the back pocket. I always knew that if I was feeling anxious or stressed or bored, I could just whip out my pipe and take a little hit and be good. And that was kind of interesting because that's not how it used to be. It used to be where I would smoke with a friend, the high would wear off, I'd go on with my life, not think about it for a few days, for a week maybe. And then, oh, oh yeah, uh, friends are getting high, sure, I'll join them. Uh, it became kind of like, uh, I don't know, like uh, I think people with cigarettes where they just, you know, gotta have that, that, that smoke. I mean, I used to smoke cigarettes and that's how I felt. What became, a, what started as like a once in a while thing became, I gotta have a smoke in the morning, I have to have a smoke after work, before work. I used to work at Jimmy John's and that's kind of where I, I think this really started to manifest. Comment down below with your story and how this has manifested because I'm really curious to know. It's always interesting to see and hear how, you know, we just exacerbates. And so, yeah, I was working at Jimmy John's and it started the first time I started to smoke with them would be after work. They would go in the parking lot and they'd have a pipe and I would smoke with them. We'd drive around for a bit and I'd go home. That would be it. Suddenly it was like, you know what? Let's, uh, you know, it's slow. No one's coming in. We got a freezer that, you know, gets all the air and blows it out on like the steam thing at the top. We can go smoke in there. And so what I would do would be like two hours of my shift. We'd each take a rotation, go hit, hit the pipe, uh, blow it into the, the vent on the ceiling and uh, go on with work, work. Uh, and then it became, you know, we did that once, once a shift and it just helped kind of, you know, alleviate the, the boredom. And then it became, you know what, let's do this a couple times, right? Like I have a break coming up. Uh, we already did it, but you know, my high's wearing off. Let's try again so I can eat this delicious Jimmy John sandwich and it's gonna even be even better. I'm salivating <laughs> just talking about it right now. So that would happen. And then it was like, fuck, you know what? Let's just smoke all the, the whole shift. <laughs> like this is boring as hell. And that's just like, you know, one example of how it just started as a very innocent thing and it just boom, boom, boom. So you know I'm smoking all the time at work. And uh, thankfully it was Jimmy John, so there wasn't too many, you know, responsibilities or consequences. But that started to manifest in other areas of life as well, including relationships, including friendships, including my life in general until I, one day I was smoking and selling weed by the pounds and it was just like boom. It's just my life was based around weed and that was a big red flag. If you guys watched the interview, which will be linked down below, Anjay talked about how he like made a promise to himself like he's going to take some time off. Like tea breaks, right? Yeah, when do tea breaks work? And he said in three hours he was smoking weed heavily. He, like he couldn't do it. It was just near impossible. And that's kind of when he realized that it had become a crutch, it had become a real addiction. I noticed the same thing, that I would take, make these promises that I wasn't gonna smoke. And of course, within a few days, I would be lighting up again. And then months would go by where I'd be smoking. Now this kind of leads into number three here, which is that time just disappears. I don't mean like a few hours, I mean years. Years go by where suddenly I'll wake up and I'll be like, wow, like what's what, what four years just went by what the hell happened um, and that's exactly what happened <laughs> four years went by in my life where I was smoking pretty much consistently and it was just like very sobering because I was like four years ago I was enjoying this I was connecting with people my you know all these magical things were happening so I thought and now here I am I've, I've dropped out of school I don't really have a great job. I don't have much money and I'm selling weed. Wow, this is, this is crazy. This is not where I thought my life was going. I went to UW-Madison, which is a D1 college. 
And I had a lot of pride going there because, hey, I was gonna be a dentist, I was gonna make bank, I was uh, in a top school in the country, uh, yada, yada. And yeah, to, to, to have that reality to slowly disappear over time was, uh, was very scary and depressing. And I had to look back honestly and be like, wow, Joel, you really kind of, you are not living up to your potential. And you know, this is, uh, this is not where we thought we were gonna be at this point. Uh, I was initially going for dentistry and I very quickly realized my grades were not gonna be good enough to do that because you need like a 385 to be considered for dental school. And I was like, why would I even try for that? Like, it's gonna be impossible. And because of that insecurity that started to arise because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to fulfill this goal, uh, I turned to weed even more and it just became a vicious cycle. And so I recently made a video, yesterday actually, so it's gonna be up now, where I talked about two important questions that must be asked to quit marijuana to get sober for any addiction. And one of those questions was, where do I want to be in X amount of years from now? To add on to that, where will I be if I continue this pattern and this habit? And that's exactly what I had to do in that situation where I was like, wow, four years went by like that. Four years is going to go by as well like that. And it has because it's been six years since I quit smoking. When I asked that question, honestly, I was like, you know, I'm, if I keep, continue smoking, my life's, I'm not going to have a great job. I might be in prison. I might be in jail. I might be dead because I was selling weed. Obviously that's very intense. And however, it was, a, it was something I had to be honest about with myself about in that those are all consequences that could happen if I continue down this path. So that was a really big turning moment. And I got my time back. I got my life back because I decided to quit. And no longer do I feel like my time is slipping away because uh, I'm, I'm doing dysfunctional things. Now, sure, there's other things I do that sometimes waste time that I'm working on. Uh, however, it, with weed, that's no longer an issue. And again, it's a silent killer, it's a slow killer. It hides in the shadows, ch chipping away at you, death by a thousand cuts. And my hope for you is that you're able to recognize this, these signs, recognize that this is happening, and be able to make the change, because I didn't, and I experienced some major consequences because of it. So guys, <laughs> bottom line, don't go through the pain I did. And that's one of the beautiful things about getting sober, is we get to live, we get to enjoy life, we don't have to worry about death every single day. Is it coming? Of course it is. However, we at least get some time now to enjoy. So with that, guys, it's gonna end the video. Really appreciate your time, and talk to you soon. Peace.